I'm here in Taipei, Taiwan at one of my favorite trade shows of the year. Behind me is 2035, Immobility Taiwan, Taipei Ampa, and Autotronics Taipei. So if you're in the business looking to make the right contracts or just meet the right people for your next project, this is one of those trade shows you have to mark on your calendar and just attend every year. So really quickly, let's go inside. I want to show you some of the amazing exhibits going on and give you a flavor of the show. Let's go. Hi, hello. Uh, I'm the head of the global marketing. My name is Leah and uh, this is Zerova. So I have a couple of questions for you. The first question is, I know Zerova offers white labeling, which is where you'll make the product, but then you'll put other brands' logos on it. Right. Can you tell me a little bit more about that process and how it works? Sure. Like, because uh, we are a manufacturing company, so our main goal is like help, helping our partners uh, promote their brands globally. So our team will evaluate and see if uh, it's going to be our partner. And later, for the detail and the background check, we will be passed on our sales team. So what is the fastest DC fast charger that Zerova makes right now? Well, so far, we are just standing in front of it. This, this one? This is the one. This is the megawatt dispenser. But, yeah, it's a megawatt. It's a megawatt. Yes. <laughs> look, at the, look at how yeah, thick very, that cable is. That's... Yeah, this megawatt dispenser we already exhibited at CES this year. Okay. And that one was a liquid cool. So which means uh, we can provide the, the, our partners or our client for a different solutions if you want air cooled or liquid cooled. So that's for heavy duty trucking and big commercial vehicles, right? Right. What is the largest growing segment for charging? So we're seeing everything from bicycles, right? Small little things to electric vehicles, residential home charging, DC fast charging. We're seeing the market kind of explode, and I can just tell every time I come to these shows, there's more and more, like these are, well, these, I don't know, no, those are their last year, yeah. but the market offering keeps growing. So what is the largest growing segment for you? Just for zero by market itself, we will say DC charge is definitely the main market for us. And the residential, we also keep on with that, but we will still be target on the DC faster charger. That's why we have this NCS. So here behind me is the DQ480. This is interesting because this is a standalone charger. The cabinet component that does all the electronics is actually built right in. So everything that you need, you're seeing right here behind me. You guys know here in North America, we've made a switch to the North American charging standard. That's what this is. This is what Tesla pioneered. Here's an example of a charger that uses that. How cool is that? Hi, my name is Roger Huang. I'm a business development manager um, and I work at Exxon Technology Corporation. So one thing I hear a lot in the industry is silicon carbide, especially when it comes to MOSFETs, but what does it actually mean? Silicon carbide MOSFET has uh, a few advantages over silicon MOSFET and silicon IGBT. Number one would be the, uh, the high uh, breakdown voltage. So with the uh, sil silicon MOSFET, typically the breakdown voltage usually limits to about 600 volts. Okay. IGBT, that's between about 600 to 1200 volt, and then silicon carbide MOSFET, that's um, 12 Volt. And we're also seeing a trend going towards uh, 700 volt. So that's one number one advantage. Number two is uh, silicon uh, carbide also has uh, better thermal conductivity, better heat transfer, um, be better heat dissipation. So we're able to, to reduce the, the size of the power device or with the same size we can produce uh, more power output. That means better performance. One of the driver's anxiety is uh, not having enough charge, right? To, to make to complete a journey. As we demand longer driving range, we need to make the power device more efficient. That's where silicon carbide can, um, can help a lot. This motor is, we call me the motor. So its uh, power can be up to 250 watts. It has a high torque. So it, it, it's suitable for the mountain climbing and for the life um, the riding. So, so what are the benefits of having a mid-motor versus a hub motor? Okay, middle motor, it has a good balance. And uh, if you have a, a hub motor, the vibration will be bigger. So it's um, not suitable for the live riding because it's not comfortable for the rider. Yes. And uh, it's the battery is more compact in the body. This is our development for the wiper motor. It's suitable for the electric vehicle. 
it has better performance and it has low noise because the, this motor is BLDC, Russian List Permanent Motor. So what are some of the challenges of developing terminals and other hardware for such high voltage applications? Yeah, so for EV couplers, um, you know, we have to find a uh, maintain a balance between performance and um, aesthetic. The world's moving at a faster pace and EV charging has to keep up. So what we designed is um, our charger has to maintain um, high charging outputs, but at the same time operate it under a strict um, safety regulations. Tell me a little bit about the, the uh, qualification testing and some of the hardcore engineering testing that happens to qualify these kinds of equipment. Right, so our product has to comply with uh, local regulations and standards. So for the uh, North American regions, we have the AC Type 1, the CCS 1s, as well as the uh, NACS. So all these standards have uh, similar testings um, from like temperature rise, to uh, dielectrical withdrawal tests, to uh, low temperature drop tests, as well as a drive over test. This is an electric vehicle charger that we all know and love, but there's so much amazing engineering that makes that possible. Check this out. We're at KS Terminals, and here behind me, they have some amazing little cutouts. For example, here's a look inside of one of these massive DC fast charging ribbons. And here, is an example of one that has cooling built in. So this is such huge amounts of electricity, right? 300 kilowatts, for example, that it needs to be cooled. And these ribbons actually have liquid cooling built in. Some of them are air-cooled, liquid-cooled, but all of this is inside of that little cable that you probably never think of. And inside every electric vehicle, every charging cable, just imagine how many terminals and endpoints and caps and other fittings there are. And all these have to be waterproof or other engineering considerations, but just look at how cool all this stuff is. But these are those little unsung components that can make all of our electronics possible in the most amazing way. Isn't that cool? Look at this. Like, look at this. This is for high-end applications, for like that megawatt charge that we saw, for example. Hello everyone, my name is Hans, and uh, we work in uh, uh, e-neural technology. Uh, our vision is just to develop the uh, automatically uh, AI model to improve uh, ADAS driving car system and our computer vision uh, AI in everywhere. So my first question is, can you tell me what self-learning AI is? Traditionally, training and updating model required a significant human effort to annotate with the poor recognition. It uh, will consume a lot of uh, uh, manpower and a lot of uh, manpower of time and, and, and the resources. But, uh, however, with our developed self-learning uh, technology, only new image data need to provide it, uh, while the rest of the learning process is just automatically. Before uh, we build them, we just cannot to detect the object by here. But if we uh, use the sensor fusion result, we can improve the detection result. So sensory fusion is taking inputs that are maybe image-based, LiDAR, radar, and bring yeah. it together to overlay it together and to detect objects using all three. Yeah. Where day or night, weather, like you mentioned, for example, you know the hardest thing to do when you're driving is when the sun is going down and the light is right in your eye. Yes. Even for humans, it's very hard to drive. And I've always wondered, how are cars gonna drive at that time of day? Well, if you have radar, if you have LiDAR, that wouldn't be much of a problem. So the sensor fusion is overlaying all of that information. Okay, thank and you, you can see how much more improvement there is. In the, in the core case, we can improve more than 10% accuracy. Really? Yes. Okay. I had a chance to chat with eNeural Technologies because there was a question I've been wondering. When all cars drive themselves, who's going to do that work? Who's going to figure out how to make self-driving cars? Every car OEM? No, one thing I've learned at shows like this is that there are sub-component manufacturers. There's people that make seats and chargers and cables and so many little odds and ends that go inside of a completed car. It'll be the same thing here.
So hello, my name is Edward. I'm the chairman of HD Renewable Energy. So Edward, why is energy visualization so important? Well, first off, you can't really see energy. And we in the energy business, we need to see how much generation we have, how much we store, how much storage we have, and also dispatch. So we actually have a control room in our office where we can show generation, uh, storage, and to monitor our um, individual uh, power plants. And so being this close to the data and having such insight, tell us a little bit about like virtual power plants. I've, yeah. It's a term I've heard a lot lately, yeah. right? Virtual power plants are in a de decentralized system. Uh, it's composed of uh, small generations and batteries, and they all work together to help stabilize the grid. And uh, HCRE, as an aggregator, we aggregate different uh, solar farms and batteries to dispatch or uh, store energy. So this is our uh, 360 uh, kilowatt chargers with two guns. It can charge a car in about 30, 40 minutes to 80% capacity. A question I always get is if we move to all electric cars and heat pumps, can the grid actually cope? And it turns out, yes, it can. I just met with a company called HT Renewable Energy, and they deal with energy management data. And the key is better data. Because yes, if we want to have solar panels and renewable energy and electric vehicle charging, all that needs to happen with better and more reliable data. I mean, you can better visualize your data, amazing things can happen. For example, virtual power plants, where you have solar powered carports that are charging cars and local restaurants and businesses, maybe even homes, all happening because we can better understand the data and see when energy is being produced, when it's actually needed and marrying them together. So it's not just about producing more energy or using more energy. It's about better understanding exactly when it's happening to allow things like this. Because with a virtual power plant, you don't have to distribute energy hundreds or thousands of miles. You can use it right where it's needed. And all that is possible with better data. So that is a really quick look. Like we mentioned, if you're in the e-mobility space, and you're gonna make the right partnerships or find suppliers or vendors for your big project, this is the show you have to attend. We all fall in love with the end products, the cars, the chargers, but there are a thousand components that great engineering needs in order for all those products to be possible. And don't forget, there's an online component to this show as well. So for next year, you have to make this trade show a must visit on your list.